Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. You do that every time. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Can you believe it? It's actually our 20th episode. How good is that? We've been on for 20 weeks, effectively. That's insane, isn't it, when you think yeah. about it? So uh, we've got people joining us already. We've got Greg joining us. It was absolutely fantastic. So we started this in April, and we're now almost into And Actually, no, we are in September now. And, of course, we're still chugging along, going, cutting through the whole cur COVID curfew and all the rest of it. So if you're stuck at home with nothing to do, sitting here watching us, then that just goes to show how sad lives are. So uh, we uh, have a very, very big show for you tonight, but I can't get anywhere without by introducing my lads. So lads, how are we tonight? I'm good. Very good. Yeah, good. All right. So we're going to move on to our little uh, chat, a little discussion. This is something I was uh, reading about last week, and uh, I was very intrigued uh about what's going on here now we're going to be talking about primarily the snyder cut for justice league uh but before we uh get started on that we just want to for those who have no idea what's going on we'll explain the the details but effectively there's been a huge fan revolt uh over the justice league film that came out in 2017 and they're now doing a re-edit and releasing it uh as an, a new movie you know, TV episodes, whatever, uh, next year, okay? So the key thing is to be aware of that we're not talking about extended editions and we're not talking about director's cuts, okay? They're a completely different kettle of fish here. So we're not talking about Aliens and we're not talking about bloody other these other movies. Um, we're talking about films that have been changed uh, primarily because of fan revolt, if you will, fan inter interference is the wrong word, fan presence. Now, if you go right back, you could argue and you can argue that like Star Trek, the original series, the third season came about because of the fan, uh, all the fans writing in. Uh, BJ Trimble, as we discussed on this uh, show a few months back, wrote in and got a huge fan thing going on and pressured the networks to let the show run for another year and it ran into its third season and so on and so on. A similar thing occurred with Superman 2, the Richard uh, Donner cut. Okay, and of course, the film came out in 1982. Uh, Richard Lester made that. And then, of course, there was all this push to get the Richard Donner cut uh, released. And it did, I think it was 2006, if I recall. Uh, and of course, now after Justice League and the, the saga that Justice League went through, the film came out, was a complete failure in the, in the eyes of the box office and the fans. And there's been this huge push to get the Snyder cut. Now, for those who don't know, Zack Snyder was the director of Justice League. He had to pull out right towards the end because of a personal tragedy. Joss Whedon came in, was under pressured by the studios to cut the film down to two hours uh, and to get it released, and they did, and it was just a complete disaster. So, uh, And then, of course, people now said, no, there is apparently a Snyder cut version released available. There's a trailer for it, and it's due to come out next year. Now, there's a lot to cover off regarding this, but... First things first, um, what are your thoughts on the idea of fans pressuring studios to uh, re-release or make changes to things? Same PS, I'll start with you, man. What are your thoughts? I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, I think the end product could be the concern. Um, like with Star Trek, obviously, that occurred and that was because someone had taken it off. One, one or two people in the exec positions of the studio decided it wasn't doing well enough for whatever reason but didn't understand probably cult followings, and that's why it got the third season, as well as everything else. Stop, stop, stop. We've got 20 people. Finally, for the first time ever, we've got 20 people watching us. Oh, bands are going off. It's all very exciting. Oh, and then they've just gone into 19 again. All right. So uh, at least for <laughs> one second, for a few seconds, we had 20 people, and someone's just logged off. Anyway, sorry to cut you off, MPS, but that was a big deal. So uh, continue on. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of pushing for these, these edits, look... Uh, the Snyder Cut's a, a really unique reason uh, to do it, and that's because he didn't um, finish it the first place. It'd be like saying, why aren't we doing the original cut from Solo? You know, uh, Ron Howard came in to fix that film and, and did that. Why can't we see the original cut? You know, Richard Donner, when they did that, um, because he, he was off the set and, and um, oh, who was it that directed, it, directed the, the Superman 2? Richard Lester. Yeah, Lester. yeah, and he came in to, to sort of fix it. It's the, the problem is 
fans want a certain product, um, but I think it should, I think fans should be involved in the beginning of the product rather than having been having to be look what we've done, bang here it is, and you go well that's terrible, you know, because Justice League was a pretty average film. Um, so there were parts that were, were pretty good. There were parts that were close to what the characters were like. But on the whole, it was a terrible film. Um, so I'm curious to see what the Snyder Cut looks like. The trailer looks interesting, but it also looks like it's got the same footage pretty much as the original trailer. There's a lot of similar sort of footage. There's nothing that new about what's in it. But I think with enough voice, fans can do all sorts of things. Um, so just to respond to a comment by Derek saying that you're right, Derek, um, getting a, um, fans to uh, change a TV network is vastly different to uh, getting fans to pressure a film company to release a feature film. And you are right. The principle is the same, but the process is different. And, of course, that was, I was using that as an example. So just thought I'd just put that out there. Uh, now, there's a lot to cover off from regarding this, but, Jeffro, is there anything you want to add in? Yeah, I mean, I don't really like the fact that... Uh, fans can have that kind of clout. I would like to sort of see, well, if the director wants to to do their own cut, then um, I'm all for that. And I mean, and I think that is the underlying thing is that Zack Snyder did want to do his own cut. Uh, unfortunately, the, the fans were there to sort of help him along. But um, I think sometimes when you get too much fan involvement, particularly in social media these days, um, we, we get a, an episode nine rise of Skywalker because they're trying to basically pander to the fans and the directors are second guessing themselves and it's you, you get a bad movie as a result. So I love it when a director does the uh, the choice to be able to sort of make uh, another cut of the movie. I mean, we saw the um, uh, way back with James Cameron um, fiddling around with... Um, uh, aliens. We prior to that, we saw Steven Spielberg add uh, extra bits on for his special edition of Close Encounters, uh, the Richard Donner cut, which we saw fairly uh, recently. Uh, Ridley Scott with his uh, reworks of Blade Runner. Um, so I, I love it that a, a director can be uh, responsible for making that choice, but I don't want to see the fans uh, making that decision and. Um, the only other thing I would like to say is um, I would like to see the Richard Mark one cut of uh, Return of the Jedi because we all know that George Lucas really was uh, directing that. So I'd love to see what Richard Mark one would have actually done with that. End of right. story. So there's a few things. So once again, we've got to stay away from extended editions and whatever else. The film's come out, it's been released, it's been very successful. And then they've said, okay, we'll just put in some of the deleted scenes that were cut out, okay, or we'll just make, make a few modifications. So they're not really the same thing. We're talking about complete re-edits of a film by a different person, right? Now, yeah. um, it's a very rare scenario where directors finish filming something, they get removed or they leave, and then someone comes in and then changes everything, okay? Now, That's Solo, true. for example, uh, they, they didn't get halfway through. The guys got only like a few weeks in, the two directors, and they got kicked off. So they wouldn't have enough material to do a whole film, right? Uh, so that's doesn't fit. So with the Richard Donner um, version of Superman 2, he had pretty much finished just about everything, okay? He left. Richard Lester came in, changed a whole lot of stuff, okay? And what we ended up with was the theatrical version, which in a lot of people's eyes was very, very successful. Now, the Richard Donner version of uh, Superman 2, it was great to see it from a this is how it could have looked, but history has shown that in the end it didn't really make the film better. It was just a different ver version of the entire thing. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of a lot of people did struggle with the fact that they were using test footage from Christopher Reeve and um, uh, oh, I've forgotten the other one. He's just gone blank. Lois Lane. Margot Kidder, right? And, and it sort of jarred, okay? So it was great that you put Milo and Brando back in, but in the end was it necessary? Was it a great thing? It was, it was curious, it was good curiosity, but it didn't make the film better, okay? Now, the thing with Justice League is that it's a whole other story entirely, and there's a lot of comments coming up here uh, regarding it. Now, I agree with you, Jeffro, and it is a very, very key point about fans having the power over the studios. Now, some people are arguing that the studios are saying, hey, well, they are our audience, maybe we should listen to our audience and 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 give them what they want but of course if you're going to use that logic you'd, you'd ask them in the first place like mps was saying well ask what the fans want and then do what the fans are requesting that you shouldn't have to go through this what it shows though is that none of this stuff is easy and cut and dry i mean we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars for these products 
And it does go to show goes to show how things can just go completely off the rails when there are massive changes being made, when studios are interfering with films, when the directors have to leave at a certain point, when um, they've had to make modifications uh, that not everybody agrees with. And the key thing about the Snyder scenario, I thought this was, I mean, I did a lot of reading on this, and I thought this was very, very interesting. Now, of course, everybody has seen the trailer, most people have seen the trailer for the Snyder Cut version of uh, Justice League, and they're all like, it's the greatest thing in the universe, it's awesome. They're hanging shit on the original version which probably to a large degree is, is understandable because the original Justice League film wasn't that good, right? But what a lot of people seem to be forgetting is that Zack Snyder did Man of Steel and, of course, he did Batman versus Superman. And both of those films were very unsuccessful. A lot of people didn't like them at all. Now, admittedly, Marvel's, um, uh, what do you want to call it? MCU. Yeah, the MCU was just kicking, the kicking their asses from here to Christmas, right? So it's fine of ironic that people are saying, oh, no, we want the Zack Snyder version put back in, even though the, the previous two films were very uh, disappointing. And based on what I'd read, when he was doing Justice League, the studio was very nervous about how it was looking. They had a lot of concerns. They weren't happy with how it was um, cutting together. And some people had even said the film was unwatchable. Then, of course, he leaves. Joss Whedon, who for most people is like one of the gods of the cinematic universe, everybody loves Joss Whedon, he has to come in and fix it all up, reshoot all this new material because they've changed the script. They've said the script, the film can only be two hours long, end of story. And, of course, it gets released and people just hate it. They just can't stand it. So uh, it's kind of funny how everything just got turned on its head. Now, I'm going to read a couple of these comments. Do either of you two want to add in something? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Go on, Jeffrey. I'm thinking that um, what they would have seen is that Josh was responsible for the ensemble movie, The Avengers. I mean, essentially, Justice League is the ensemble movie for DC. So, you know, if he can do well on The Avengers, why should he not have uh, succeeded in doing uh, the ensemble uh, version for DC? All right, I'm going to well, jump in here. Sorry, so I'm going to jump in here. Um, Derek's comment about, and don't call me Darren, by the way, I don't like being called Darren. Uh, Marvel was peaking Batman. We were not Marvel. It's The point was that the two films, um, Batman versus Superman and, and uh, Man of Man Steel, of were, were like shredded by the fans, right? They absolutely despised them, okay? so And they were made by the same director that everybody now wants to put together mm -hmm. the edit. Justice League, okay? So take the Marvel picture out of it altogether, the MCU, the fact still remain that the two films were very unsuccessful in the eyes of the fans. So it's almost like the third film is following the same um, uh, sort of trend as the yeah. pattern. Thank you. MPS, go for it, mate. Let me jump on one thing. Joss Whedon did a brilliant uh, version of Avengers because he wrote the comic books for so long. Um, so he was part of Marvel's comic universe, so he understood what he was doing. I don't know if he's a big Superman, Batman fan. Zack Snyder is apparently a big Superman, uh, DC sort of fan, but Man of Steel was terrible. Uh, the writing in it was was sloppy. It was horrible. The character didn't didn't play at all. Uh, and Batman versus Superman was firstly the wrong title. Secondly, you wrote a four act film, which hang on, hang on. I don't want to cover off stuff that we've already covered right. off. I'm talking about new stuff. Right? So get through it quickly, okay? okay. Yep. Go for it. Um, but you have a four-act film that needs to be in reverse. So Justice League should have been before Batman Superman because they they did that uh, the wrong way around and added a fourth a fourth act that didn't need to be to be done. So Zack Snyder's version of Justice League is well, which the version that we've seen um, actually isn't that bad. But you've got to look at the fact that the characters are still still all out of whack. I don't think it's going to be a better version seeing the four-hour version. Now, one of the things that I wanted to try and find out, and look, there's no right or wrong, okay? This is just purely opinions from everybody, so I thought I just wanted to just clarify that. Um, I looked up the trailer for the Zack Snyder cut tonight and I watched it and it was all well and good and people are just raving it's the greatest thing in the universe. I was trying to watch the original Justice trailer, Justice League trailer from three years ago to see what the responses were for that, but unfortunately you have to trial through th thousands upon thousands of comments most of them are quite current, and everybody's talking about the current movie. I'm curious to see. I'd love to know if the original trailer for Justice League was received equally as well because trailers don't show you what the final film is going to be like. It's all going to be bells and whistles and beautiful shots. It looks fantastic. You know, for all we know, it's just we're just repeating history here. Uh, now, Daniel made a point of saying about they're shooting extra stuff for the Zack Snyder stuff. They are not, okay? Part of the agreement was that he has to use all the existing footage they've currently got, okay? So the edit 
has to, they're going to have to fork out another 30 million bucks to finish the Zytus, the Snyder Cut off. Okay, it's going to be released as four one hour uh, series, and then it gets released as a four hour movie. Okay, so that's the thing. So they're not going back and doing reshoots. All the material is done. That's what they have. That's what they work. Oh, shit, sorry, I keep hitting the mic. That's what they have to work with. Okay, so that's the actually important thing to work with, uh, to be aware of. Uh, and of course, some fans, what they're now doing, because they think the fans now think that they've won this huge battle. They're getting their DVDs and Blu-ray copies of Justice League, the theatrical version, and burning them and, you know, doing stupid stuff on filming themselves, destroying these things, which is ridiculous. We've already spent the money on the damn thing. And I agree with you, MPS, that the original version is what it is, okay? And it, there was a lot of issues with it. The director had to leave most of the way through. Someone has to come in under these tight restrictions, looked at what was already done and said, no, I don't really like that. And, of course, Joss Whedon had this massive catalogue of great success stories behind him work with what he had, and in the end, the result wasn't what everybody wanted. But does that mean, and this is the crux of the entire thing, that just because everybody wants the Snyder version to be released, based on what happened with Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman, does it mean automatically that the Snyder version is going to be better than what we've already seen? And I reckon it would be amazingly ironic if people watched the Snyder version of um, Justice League and said, that shit, I prefer the Whedon version. And that's the key thing. Everybody's like on this bandwagon yeah. and yeah. like they're all saying, oh, wow. And we, and like people are actually saying, we, the fans won. We got our way. We demanded it. We got it. And there's a huge possibility that the thing could actually just not be successful, just like the Richard Donner cut uh, wasn't for Superman 2. Anybody go for it. You guys? Yeah. I um I do remember when the uh, Justice League uh, trailer came out because uh, I remember listening to the uh, Empire Film podcast and I remember their reactions and overall it was they were very positive and very optimistic. We'd seen uh, some failures in the past movies, but when they saw the trailer, uh, they were very optimistic it was going to be success. And I think from memory, the uh, fan reactions were were like that uh, uh, as well. And I think the key thing with trailers is that you throw all the good bits in, use, uh, you know, really inspiring music and, and, and quick cuts and all that. Any trailer can really look good, but as we've seen from past experience, trailer can look fantastic. The movie, not so much. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to jump in. So, Derek, you are correct. Um, the the money, a lot of the money is for visual effects and all the rest of it. I don't think, as far to the best of my knowledge, they're not allowed to do any live action filming. Okay, so you're right. They can pick. You can pick bits out of all these other productions and visual effects and all the rest of it, model work, all that absolutely can be included. But I don't believe that live action footage is allowed to be filmed because it's they've, they've spent all their money on it. That's how I understand it. MPS, anything you want to say? Uh, I forgot my main point, but um, looking at the fact that if fans, and this will be the fun part to watch, if fans who have said we've won and it does turn out to be rubbish, will they turn around and say, you know what, we were wrong? Because in theory, the script is already finished. It's been written for years. They didn't use it all, obviously. There were rewrites. Joss had to rewrite, and he's part of the rewrite team for the script on, on the current film uh, and not known as the director for it. Um, so you've got to ask yourself, if this is a four-hour film, how big was the script originally? And like I said, with Batman versus Superman, the script, the the film was a four scene, a four act uh, film, because it should have finished when they saved Martha. Then they introduce a whole new character and a whole new thing, which makes no sense whatsoever. You finish the film and you go, "Well, here's our epilogue. It's forty minutes long." Funnily enough, the DVD version with the extended time, with the extra twenty minutes, is actually a better version of the film. Holy guacamole, we're 21 people watching us. We've broken our record and gone a bit further than that, which is great. Um, what I found interesting uh, is... Um, I forgot what I was going to say. All right, I'll just go back to this. Um, it's been given the... Yeah, um, so I did read one comment that it does... Oh, now we've got 22, Jesus Christ. Um, it does set a precedent. And, that, of course, that's the problem. Now, I accept the fact that you, if a... When studios get involved in film productions, a lot of times there's been a lot of instances where they've interfered with the production so much it's been detrimental to the production, right? And one of the best examples I can think of was Daredevil. The directors, the, the team put the whole thing together, was ready to go, was ready for release, and the studio said, nah, cut it all out, we want to make it more action-orientated and this and that, and they end up ruining the whole thing, right? So the director's cut of Daredevil is actually the, the actual version that should have come out. 
So there's definitely examples where studios can really balls up their own products. No denying that whatsoever. Uh, but there's also an argument that says, well, okay, if fans get too much power, okay, and getting on their ego trip too much, thinking, oh, look, they've just released this latest version of um, uh, Avengers 4. I'm just off the top of my head. Don't like it, right? Shit, let's start a thing. Uh, we want a new version of, uh, of of Avengers 4. Change it. We don't like it, right? And, of course, it's cost them millions of dollars to make these things in the first place. Maybe they've made their money back. Maybe they haven't. But where do you draw the line? Do you just say to the fans, look, this is what we've done. If we screwed it up, we're sorry, but it is what it is. Maybe in the next film we can do something different. Or whether they go, yeah, all right, let's 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 release it. And, of course, the irony is Warner, um, DC, uh, Warner Brothers, they get to win twice. They get all the money from the first one, even though they didn't make a profit out of it, and they'll get the money all that back back again when the thing eventually gets released next year. Uh, as a four-hour film, it would probably come out in the cinemas, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever. And, of course, they end up winning twice, whether they'll make all that money back to cover their costs is another question. So um, uh, there you go. Um, Unless it's a terrible film and people see it and trash it straight away, then no one's going to be buying it. I know that the, the initial interest will get there, uh, and you'll get a profit, but you know, this is a all they're going to do is make thirty million dollars essentially to cover their costs, and whatever else they make on top of that is is a bonus. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it's going to uh, HBO Max means it's going to streaming, so there's not going to be a huge amount of uh, money there to be had. It's not as if it's going to the cinemas. Um, is an interesting thing I read as well um, with the original story. Uh, Jason Momoa, who played Aquaman, had said that um, some of the deleted scenes and whatever else that they were planning to put back into the Snyder version, he actually said they're not necessary. He actually agreed with how Justice League looked because a lot of the stuff that was covered off ended up in being the Aquaman film. So if they put it back into this, the Snyder thing, they're actually repeating themselves. And people can say, oh, I've already seen this stuff. So See, he was yeah. actually one who was lamenting and saying, you know, sometimes you just got to take things for what they are. And to be fair, fans are very invested in this uh, these products. But I thought that was an interesting sort of way of looking at it. So, uh, yeah, the problem is that uh, he's actually one of the actors that has been very vocal in saying release the Snyder Cut. So, uh, in fact, he's saying, well, uh, you know, that stuff isn't necessary, but he's been one of the most vocal of the uh, the actors in the movie to actually get it released. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one, isn't he? I don't think that any of, any of the others really care because, um, yeah, I don't... Uh, ben Affleck's coming back to play Batman for a couple more bits and pieces and maybe one more film, but that's about it. Uh, going back to putting it on a streaming service, having it HBO Max is ridiculous because it's only going to get seen in one country. You should, they should be putting it on, on all Netflix subscriptions. It'll find it. they will, um, they'll franchise it out, so it may be on HBO Max in the States, but Stan might get it over here. So they will, well, they'll sell it off to the different territories on other different platforms, I reckon. Yep. Uh, here's a question from Colin. Uh, are the actors to any entitled to any further money? Uh, and the answer would be, depending on their contracts, yes, they would. Uh, so they uh, the actors plan to... Sort of like it's like history revisiting itself, really, and uh, so that would actually work in their favour as well, depending on how their contracts were uh, worked, uh, worked out initially. So, um, it's a very interesting sort of way of looking at the world, um, and I think timing has a lot to do with it as well. Um, I mean, we all know that Warner Warner Brothers were struggling after the, the weight of Marvel and the way that their movies were so successful. They released Man of Steel; it's it it's, it tanks. It, at least from a critic's point of view, Batman versus Superman is the same boat. And then the, the studios would have been panicking when they were doing, uh, Zach was doing Justice League, thinking, oh, shit, you know, it's a hit. It, it, it has to work. It just has to work. And if they're not happy with how it's going and then Zach leaves, they bring in Joss Whedon thinking this is this is the golden ticket. The, goo, the, the dude who can fix everything has to reshoot all these things that he didn't. And so obviously Joss, if you look at it from Joss's point of view, he clearly looked at a lot of Zach's stuff. And now, admittedly, he was put under a lot of pressure to get the film down to two hours and whatever. But he must have looked at a lot of Zach stuff and go, you know what? It doesn't work. Let's just rechange it all and get a better version out there. And I think it's highly likely that maybe the Snyder version will be great, but not necessarily better than than what yeah. uh, Josh put out. And I think there's I and a lot of fans are just on this bandwagon. It's just like it's just out of mm -hmm. control. The whole release the Snyder Cut movement and fans thinking. They've got the way uh, the whole thing ahead of them, and that might not be the case at all. MPS. The the fact that Joss read probably would have read through the script if not was 
would have had the script in front of him to then turn around and say, well, hang on, here's what you shot, here's what you've cut, this is what we have to change, means that there obviously had to be an issue to begin with somewhere, you know. So imagine if, if we didn't have the the incident with Zack Snyder and, and his family uh, and he continued on doing what he did, maybe they'd be petitioning for it to be a different film because it was probably terrible. And now they're petitioning for a film that's mm -hmm. going to be potentially, well, they should be looking at more terrible um, than mm -hmm. what's actually been released. Yes. Um, I think, if we're just going back to how it's going to get released next year on a streaming service here, it would be funny if they followed the Disney Plus thing of saying pay a bit extra and you get to see it. And Yeah, be curious to see if that actually happens or not because clearly there's a lot of interest in this thing. Okay, in, the, in what's going on, and uh, yeah, only time will tell to see whether that actually um, the yeah. properties end up being correct. NPR, one of you two wanted to say something? Yeah, I'm just thinking that uh, I mean, there's a lot of interest, but what it comes down to is that uh, in terms of a worldwide interest, it's very minuscule. In terms of a really hardcore interest, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. So I I don't really sort of see that uh, they're going to have the the balls to try and charge a premium price to see it because, as I said, it's a hardcore fan group, and in terms of numbers, uh, you know, it's 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 not it's not going to succeed. I don't know. You know, Doctor Who's been free on television for how many years, and all of a sudden they say we're going to chuck the Christmas special up in the cinemas, and fans are going to go and pay for it anyway. It's 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 the same sort of thing, you know. And it is going to be the hardcore fans; they will make their little bit of money. But I got the feeling this will be one of the most downloaded, uh, pirated things you'll probably see in the next 12 months. I don't yeah. think the streaming services, unless they're quick enough and they're smart enough, they need to drop all four episodes in one shot. They need to drop it fast and simultaneously around the world. Otherwise, people are going to download it pub, um, and pirate it uh, from there, I think, and they'll make no money out of it. A uh, couple of comments that have come up. I like this one from Michelle. Um, that uh, the powers that be have forgotten that audiences have brains. Um, yeah, well, Wonder Woman was definitely the exception of the uh, of the thing, being actually a, a quite a good film, actually. Be curious to see how the sequel sort of turns up. Uh, I do like this one from Ads, that they keep making the same mistakes. That is completely true. Uh, unfortunately, when you're dealing with egos and money and everybody thinks that this is the right decision, even if it's the wrong decision, you know, creativity versus business, and they clash that is a big problem in the film industry. And we're talking like such large volumes of money. Uh, all you need to do is have one film, and regardless of who good is, how good the person is putting it together, and the studios start thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, and then it all can just go to hell very, very quickly, So, uh, which is not good. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, that is history repeating itself on many different ways. And... Um, you pay for Disney. Uh, Darren Collins, uh, you don't. Sorry, it was that was a bad example. Uh, with Disney Plus, I think it's one of the streaming services you've got to pay extra if you want to see, like somebody mentioned Mulan earlier, you've got to pay extra if you want to see a special premiere. I think it's Disney. Yeah, Plus. Disney. Disney. Yes. Okay. So you are right, Darren. There is actually a, a subscription service, but if you want to see theatrically released movies that aren't being theatrically released, you pay extra for them. And I think it's 30 bucks or something. So, which is a bit of a ripoff. Um, so there you go. Repent anyway, recorded. So there's a soul kind working different version of the same movie. Uh, does the soul kind clause work on a different version of the same movie? I don't know. I mean, the thing with Superman 2 is that it came, it went, it was all history. Even Richard Donner wasn't interested in being involved in the re edits. Um, and I think he'd left notes and someone else started putting it together. And then he stuck his nose in and said, All right, fine, we'll release it. And just it was more to sort of see how it was going to turn out. And people got to see it. Oh my God, it's great. The Richard Donner cut. They see it and go, Yeah, I'm done now. Back to the Richard Lester version. So, uh, it's funny how it works, eh? So, yes, I was very intrigued uh, with it, about the whole Zack Snyder thing and the fans get up in arms. And I think it was mentioned earlier about how with, like, Rise of Skywalker and all the rest of it, fans are so anti-Lucasfilm um, at the moment because of the three sequel trilogy films. And you do wonder how far this fan pressure can go because it is effectively bullying. Now, you know, it's, it's professional bullying, if you will. But... Um, you do wonder if it's say, you know what, just leave everything as it is and just move on, or do we go back and revisit things later on and do as the fans wanted? Um, but, of course, if you ask a lot of fans, they've got no idea what they want at the best of times, right? NPS is a good example, right? NPS would say, dude, let's make a Justice League movie. You'd say, I want to pick this comic here with this story here. You ask 10 other fans that end up with 10 different stories, and they go, well, which one's right? And before you, well, you start working it all out, you start going off on different tangents, and you go, hang on, that's not what it's meant to be about. You're right, you're wrong, and it's just... 
no one can ever decide. So sometimes what you get is good enough to say, you know what, we'll just deal with it. And if it doesn't work, all right, so be a Jedi. Uh, and maybe the dust will settle and it'll get remade later on or extended. Yep. See, and that works in the original Batman, uh, the 89, 92, 95, 97 series of films. Batman, Batman Returns, great films, love them. Don't bother with the other two. Then Batman Begin comes along. That's fantastic, in my opinion. Uh, the Dark Knight is not as good, in my opinion, and The Dark Knight Rises is terrible, so I don't even bother watching the third one. So I've taken the choice of going, well, I'll watch the good stuff. And, right. yes, I've seen the, the average and not so good, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, Derek made an interesting point about uh, how much it costs to make Justice League. I don't want to – there's a lot of numbers here to read. You don't need to read it all. But ultimately, it made a lot of – it made a profit, just not as big a profit as the Avengers movies. Uh, and I think that's a – sort of an interesting point to make i thought it had made a loss but uh maybe it did make a profit after all but uh yeah you're right once i guess you're judging apples for apples people sort of start comparing mps i think you're gonna say oh, they're, they're based, and derek will know this probably better than i do but it's not based so much on dollar value but based on credits or percentage points so uh, when you turn around and say it made two billion dollars you go that's great but um it cost you a billion dollars to make you only made 50 percent of what it was not you know it cost you 10 bucks and you made two billion so yeah and and as uh derek has mentioned about snyder himself um he's on the edge i mean he's made a couple of films that haven't worked I and mean, as we mentioned earlier with man of steel and batman versus Superman, watchman of course was uh, a pretty good movie so yeah the pressure's on but uh yeah so i think we could probably almost wrap this up now otherwise we kind of start repeating ourselves but uh yes it'll be interesting to see how it all turns out I now mean, i personally think if it's going to be extended to four hours that's probably not a bad thing it'll be a good chance to either make the story really comprehensive or it'll just be full of fluff the first hour of that mini series will be the telltale if you get to the first hour and you go you know what it's just, it's just dragging out for the sake of dragging out then it'll be a disaster but if it ends up being really really quite um uh riveting and engrossing then maybe it has a good chance of succeeding after all and of course if it does succeed and then i mean like the thing comes out and it is like the greatest thing in the universe then all the fans are going to be going we won we are so cool what's the next movie we can turn to and get them to remake <laughs> remake that so uh there you go all right so it's uh now 20 to 10 we're going to start wrapping this up uh absolutely fantastic now uh any final words from you two lads before we call it a night basically uh bring on the snyder cut let's all judge it and then move on thankfully somebody somebody said oh in, in like in facebook or whatever oh is the snyder cut in the kelvin timeline it's like don't freaking start <laughs> guys shit me sometimes mps uh, yeah, I just think we have to wait and see with that. Other than that, um, no, 2010 next year, next week uh, for our year, and that should be interesting. Very good. And ironically, we ended up with 22 people watching tonight, even for a very Ooh. short period of time. So it's absolutely fantastic. And speaking of Kelvin timelines, we are going to be talking about Star Trek movies next week. So uh, there you go, because I've got a bone to pick. No, not a bone of contention or so much, but certainly something worth bringing up. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to buzz off. Have a great uh, week. We'll see you next week. And make sure in the interim that you all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Stay nerdy. Sure.